In coming to know the Lord Jesus, it is important to rightly divide the word of truth. When it comes to the Old and New Testaments, some Christians get confused on what they should be applying from the Law of Moses and why is it relevant in this day and age. In studying the scriptures, it is important to realize many passages in the Bible are not meant for you, and yet many are. Some were meant for the Jews of the past, others are meant for saved Christians today, and some are entirely directed at lost people. The question is, how can we tell the difference? Here, we will be looking over three different questions in relation to what is the purpose of the law, which are, what does the law mean for the lost world? What does the law mean for saved people? And are Christians required to follow the ordinances and statutes of the Mosaic Law today? Let's go over these points and then conclude the study. The purpose of the law primarily for this current dispensation called the Church Age is for people to realize that they are a sinner. As established in the following verses, the Bible demonstrates clearly where a person has fallen short of God's standard, and that his operation for salvation shows the need for atonement, which cannot be done with a person's good works. Here are those verses. Romans 3 verses 19 to 20. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. 1 Timothy 1 verses 9-11 Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. If you do not believe, you're lost and you're on your way to hell. God has given you now, in this current dispensation, to get saved by grace through faith and not of works which was not the case in the past, before Christ's death, neither in the future during the time of Jacob's trouble, and so on. Your own righteousness is not going to save you, so you need to accept God's righteousness through Jesus Christ, which there is no other way to be saved otherwise. To start off this section, Let's read some verses that demonstrate where we, the body of Christ, stand with the law. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15 For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you are saved, ye are not under the law. You may end up dying in your physical body as a result of a sin you are doing, but your spiritual body and eternal security will not be at stake. In Romans 3 verse 31, it reads, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. This verse shows that we, 
as the purchased possession of Christ, let the lost world know about the penalty of sin according to the law, not because we have not broken the law in our past, but because of the imputed righteousness that comes with being in Christ. We will not be made to suffer the consequences of the sin that we have done in hell because we are covered by the atonement of Christ's blood and are called to reach out to the unsaved as a chance that they might accept the same gift of God that we have. Now this becomes tricky for a lot of professing Christians, as they will try to turn back to the law with its ordinances and practices in an attempt to either prove that they are saved or in a vain attempt to try to please God. Paul's letter to the Galatians completely destroys this mindset, but here we'll be going over some passages that deal with the observance of the law in our walk with the Lord today. I'll read some passages to show the application of the law for Christians while providing some commentary. To get started, in Galatians 2 verse 16, it reads, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. This demonstrates ultimately that you'd be attempting to serve God in vain if you tried working within the law to earn God's approval. In Galatians 5 verses 1 to 3, we read, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Those who are trying to put you back into the Old Testament practices are actually teaching you to go against the New Testament plan for salvation. The law as contained in ordinances served their purpose by foreshadowing what Christ was to do as Messiah. Hebrews 10 verse 1 says, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of those things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. As the book of Hebrews explains, all the sacrifices and rituals were prefiguring Christ's death, resurrection, and his plan for salvation. And now with the work that Jesus had finished, there is no need to continue in these things. However, with that being said, while we do have liberty in things such as meat, or in drink, or in respect of unholy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, according to Colossians 2 verse 16, the moral law, as found in things like murder, stealing, fornication, drunkenness, covetousness, and so on, are not issues of liberty that we can choose to or not to abstain from as these are commands that are expressed within the New Testament. While you won't go to hell for doing such things, sin is still sin, and our answer towards a good conscience is found in our attempts to do God's will according to his word, even in the attempt of abstinence from sins. Sin might not get you in hell if you are saved, but it hurts your testimony to both saved and lost people. To abstain from sin expresses the work of the Spirit in your second birth, and to actively engage in sins without repentance or humility can lead to doubting one's initial salvation. 
the liberty that we have under Christ is undeniable, and to teach a complete observance of the Mosaic law is not possible by man, neither is it required under Christ. Lost people are to know the severity of their sins according to the law, and saved people will not be held accountable to the consequences of the law. If you're not saved already, get saved. And if you are saved, don't forget that you are not saved by the works that you do, but by the finished work that he did.